Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days or to Phil's Sausage Making. Yes, Phil is our sausage maker. He's our resident sausage maker. Um, he's the one that has experience with this. So um, today we are taking these beautiful pork butts. Uh, they're about 21 pounds all together and that's, you know, with the bone in and everything. So it's going to be about 20 pounds when we're done. Um, and we are going to make cheddar brats with it because we do love us some brats and we do love us some cheddar brats. I in particular like the cheddar brats. Now, normally, you know, you can do jalapeno also, um, but we just, we're gonna run with the cheddar. So what Phil's doing right now is he's just cutting this up into easy pieces that we're gonna be able to put into the meat grinder. He's gonna leave the bone out. And uh, once we get it all cut up, we'll be back to show you how we grind it up. Pork butt is perfect for this because it has the fat in it and you need the fat when you are making sausage or brats. That's also where the flavor is. So you don't want to, you don't want to take out that fat. You want to make sure to leave it in there. Um, and it gets all ground up and mixed up and that's what will hold your flavor beautifully. It's going to be so good. So while I'm sure you could make it with pork loin, honestly, pork butt is the best thing that you could use it for. The best part about this is per pound, pork butt is so much cheaper than a lot of your brats or your sausages and doing it yourself, you're being able to control what goes into it, which makes it even better yet, in my opinion, because they're putting so much junk in our food now that I would much rather have something where we control what's going on. So he got it all cut up It filled that big old Tupperware bowl. Um, and now we're going to grind it and we don't have any of those commercial gray, you know, oh. tubs. So, um, we're going to grind it, you know, we're going to grind it and put it in there now before he turns it on, <laughs> before he turns it on, wanted to let you know, um, first any grinder that you have will work. If you're using a KitchenAid, you know, go slow, take it easy on it because those motors are yeah. not very friendly. <clears throat> they they just, they wear out. It seems pretty quick. So you want to be careful with that. But I would love to tell you this grinder, except they no longer make them available. So I don't, I don't know. Pick any grinder that you want. Um, and you want to do a coarse grind and you only have to do one. You only have to put it through the grinder one time, which is nice. Cause when you do like venison, you have to put it through with a coarse grind and then a finer grind in order to get the right consistency. But for the purpose of bratwurst, um, we are just doing a coarse grind. So here, Phil's going to start doing the grinding stuff. Mm-hmm. You want to hold the button down? Yeah. Well, no, you just push it down. So we got it all ground up. We've got it in a super big bowl, coarse ground, all that beautiful fat and the pork. And now we're going to mix together. We, <laughs> Phil is going to mix together um, all the spices for it. So briefly, I'm just going to let you know what we've got. But as usual, there will be a link down below so that you can download this or download. You can go see this recipe and print it off if you want. Um, so we've got diced onion. Now I'm using the Thrive Life chopped onions. This is like the perfect thing for these. I love these things. We've got minced garlic. We have smoked paprika. That's going to give us a little bit of a nice smoky taste to it. Salt, coarsely ground pepper, and I think that's it. But like I said, there's a link down below. So now he's going to mix this all together as best as he can. So you don't want to dump it all in? No. Okay. I want it to get a little bit mixed up get it to the bottom now dump the rest of it dump the rest of the onion mm -hmm. okay okay i'm 
Do you have to use Thrive Onions? No, you can use fresh onions, you can use dehydrated onions. Um, you definitely, I, in my opinion, would end up with a better product uh, if you used fresh, fresh or freeze-dried or dehydrated versus powdered. And this is like a really great task for somebody who likes to get in there and play with their food, right? <laughs> <laughs> now you want, now you want this stuff. You want the powder first, or you want the garlic first? The garlic first. Okay, garlic. Mm -mm -mm. So again, it's just a matter of getting in there and really mixing that up. Make sure you get all the way down to the bottom because you want everything that comes through the sausage stuffer to be well mixed up. Now, okay, are you ready? Okay. So what do you figure it took to cut it up? Like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes? 15. 15 minutes to cut up the two pork butts and then probably about 15 minutes to grind it. Yep. yep. And it's not even going to take 10 minutes to mix it all together. So time-wise, it's not really uh, prohibitive. You need to set a little, you know, set aside a little bit of time because making the sausage itself is going to be a little bit more. So I'll put a link down below um, for casings because that may be challenging if you don't have a butcher shop in your area where you can get hold of them pretty easy. But. Go to any one of your deer processing places, they'll have them. Well, some people don't have deer processing places. Not everybody lives like we do. <laughs> everybody hunts. Not everybody. And some folks live in the city. So you might try a butcher shop, but um, definitely you can also get them online. I'll put a link down below for them. It smells really good. This is like the hardest part, I think. Because now I have to get the cheese. Cheese! <laughs> cheese, cheese, cheese. Okay, now we're going to do the first half of the cheese. Ready, Freddy? Now, we're using the already shredded cheese, but you can definitely pick up the block cheese and shred that yourself or grind it through your grinder. Follow your sauce, you know, after you're done grinding your, your meat, you can put your cheese in there and grind that up too. And it's probably slightly more economical, but I have the shredded cheddar in the fridge. So, ready for the second half? Mm -hmm. Okay, second half coming at you. I'm hanging. Okay. Okay, so we're going to finish mixing this up and then we're going to let it rest for a little bit while we get things cleaned up and moved around to start stuffing the brats. Okay, what you want to do is you want to grease up just grab some lard and grease that up, okay? And, okay, and then we're going to take our casing and we're going to find, like, the end of the rubber band, only it doesn't have that nice rolled thing, so you got to find it yourself. There it is. Okay, now we're going to slide it on. No, no, no. Come on, let me see you. Okay. So now we're just going to keep working it. There you go. Phil's holding the end so it stays up, which makes it easier for me to push it on. There we go. 
Water is your friend. You want to make sure that you've got water around. Don't pull too hard. And there we go. Okay. And you just keep feeding it on. Okay. The hard part is actually doing this on camera. So there we go. Oh, come back here. Okay. But I was cranking right along there the minute I turned the camera off. So there we go. See? So you just need to not have it taut, but hold it up. There we go. Now we're going to get this all on. Okay, so we fed it all the way through, and you want to make sure, you know, you, do, you don't want it on the end. You don't want to tie it off yet because you want to push some sausage through to get rid of any air first, and then we'll tie off the end. So you guys will see that. Okay, so we're all set up. You still want to keep your water over here. That's got the extra um, casing in it. And because you're going to want to keep adding moisture to the casing, correct? Correct. Okay. And that's what makes it slide. That's what makes it slide. Okay, hang on. I should put my gloves on first. Okay. I'm on the other end of this because I'm going to be feeding it into, unlike a canister sausage stuffer, um, I have to keep feeding this in to make sure that it stays consistent as it comes out so in this case it is kind of a two-person job phil is on the finishing end of it because he's going to be the one um controlling what's happening on that end so um what you want to know is that you don't twist it off as you go you twist it off when you're done right you just keep going with the whole thing when right. you're done. You tie the knot at the end, then you twist them into the lengths you want. Right, right. So, okay. We're going to have a big old snake here. We're going to have a big old snake here, and it's going to get loud. So if we have to say anything, we will turn this off to say something. Uh-huh. First, we're going to turn the power on. Okay. Okay, so now we've pushed all the excess air out. So I'm just going to take that out. Come here. Okay, put it back in the bowl. And Phil is going to pull off the casing and tie a knot in the end of it. Now, I am doing this on low speed because I want to be able to control it. So do what you're comfortable with. Can you get it? It's very hard to tie a snotty knot with no thumb. Okay. Make it loose when you put it through because it can always tight. There you go. Okay. Got it. Got it. Almost that. Okay. Because you want to try to avoid air pockets when you're doing this. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. people to do this does help because then you can stop go stop go stop go so he let me know that we were getting near the end of this you want to leave a couple of inches extra on the end so that it can be tied off so now dun, dun, dun. Dun. okay so that's about 10 pounds of beautiful Ten sausage Please. Okay. Him now. Okay. Okay. How long do you want them? Um, you know, a brat. You so six me. inches. 
John. I'm sorry. You take okay. it where you here. want it and twist it. Okay, so right there. So we're going to take it right here, and then he's going to twist it, okay? And then twist if it. I understand correctly... And if you go here, yep. twist it. And then you use that Grab one to measure hands. the next one. Grab both hands. Okay. And twist. Okay. You Should can. I grab another um, cookie sheet? You can. So that we can lay the twisted ones. Twisted sister. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now. Okay. So now we're going to go. So we want to bring this up to measure it. See, I don't know. Are we getting any in shot? No. So we want to bring this one up so that we're using the last one to measure what the next one is. If you've got long pointy nails, don't do this. Okay. And then we're going to use, so we got to be able to twist it enough. Go ahead, set it down. Yep. Okay. And then we use that one to twist off this one. And so, oh, that one's that is okay so yeah you know it's i'm not even showing this hang on one sec okay so you're using the one before it to make the measurement so that you're getting you know somewhat similar oh, 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 i'm untwisting that one okay there and then we're going to take this one fold it back measure it off and then twist now are we keeping these all linked together you're going to do them in fours or something, right? To put them in your bags? Yeah. So should we stop right there then and cut it? No, I let them sit for a while with the links. Okay. So next we're going to do this. And this is like a little tricky. Again, four hands are better than two because you have to make sure you're not twisting up the other end. There we go. Okay. Tell you what, you can't buy brats like this in the store. Now, see how this one had kind of a kink in it? So we can push that down. Perfect. Okay. And then twisted sister again. I hope I'm catching all this. And we go every other one, twist a different way. Okay. Twist that one back toward you. Twist this one towards me. There we go. Okay. And then we go back this way. Okay. And now we're going to twist that one away from me. There we go. This is why Phil's the sausage making guru. Okay, let me move you back just a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna go this way and we're gonna twist it to me. So on this end it's to me, on that end it's away from me. Mm hmm. Okay. And just a couple, two, three times is sufficient. Okay. Now we're gonna try to keep making room here. Because we're only, like, not even halfway through. Okay. Okay, we'll be back when this is done. Okay, so we are going to... We've already done half of it, and now we're going to do this so that um, Phil's measuring off four brats, and then we're tying knots and going from there. So, okay. Let me, let me get myself situated. Ready? That's fine. We'll just, what we'll do, because it came out thinner, you guys, yeah. which you may not be able to see, is that we will push this back up this way when we get to that point. Okay, so. You think that's four? So now just pull it out a little bit, a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> Make sure it's wet. <laughs> now we'll take this piece and we'll twist it into, you know, three or four brats uh, that we'll cook at one time. Okay, hang on here. There we go. Okay, so now we have that. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so now Phil is going to twist them. Twist them, honey. Well, I tie this knot. Right here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 
Now we're doing this like four at a time because that's, you know, that's the amount that we eat. So just makes it easier for us on the other end. I have one longer. That's fine. I'm not sure I'm going to make two out of that. Make two out of that, yeah. Egg. Okay, and then just tuck them two to side. That's fine. There we go. And we're on to the next one. Tie just knot. Yep. yep. Okay. Oh, hang on. Get locked and loaded here. Okay. Okay. Well, that's not going to make four, is it? No. One, two, okay. <clears throat> Fun when you're working with something this slippery and your hands are greasy. It's a riot. Okay. Okay, there you go. So there's that one. So now do your twisty twisty. Twist with sister. Okay, so that is almost, well, it's probably about eight pounds of sausage um, before we ran out of the casing. I still got a little bit of casing left, but honestly, I'm probably just going to make patties with whatever's left. So we did these in spaces of four and four and five yeah. for the most part um and i mean they're not perfect like you get at the grocery store that's what makes them even better so tonight we are having brats and pierogies without buns because i'm not gonna be making any bread <laughs> but okay so we will show you dinner tonight here we go so I just took some frozen pierogies and put them on a cookie sheet, cookie sheet, okay? And put the, I boiled the brats for, I don't know, 10 minutes. And then I put them on the cookie sheet with the pierogies, put them in the oven, cooked them up, and we have dinner. Okay, you guys, this is going to be amazing and awesome. I hope you enjoyed this. And remember, until next time, please be safe.